Okay, hey everybody. Good day to you all. God bless you and welcome to today's study of God's Word. Uh, we're going to pick it up with Leviticus chapter 14 uh, here in a moment. I'm uh, going to be covering the law of leprosy. Uh, remember in the last chapter, chapter 13, we covered uh, how to discern uh, leprosy. And so before we get started let's go to our father in prayer father i pray that you open eyes open ears this day and let us receive the wisdom that you would have us receive from your word today father so in yeshua's precious name let's get right into it the book of the uh, of leviticus chapter 14 covering the law of leprosy verse 1 and it reads and the lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now, remember that uh, you can see that this is delivered to Moses alone. Uh, the last chapter on how to discern uh, leprosy was delivered to Moses and Aaron, but this being the law of leprosy is delivered to Moses alone and kind of solidifies Moses' position as the great lawgiver. <clears throat> Verse 2, this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. Verse 3, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, four, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds, this is going to be two sparrows, alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. Verse 5. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. You can Running water you can think of even as, as living water, not, not stagnant. Verse 6. As for the living bird, he shall take it, the priest, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them in the living, dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. Verse 7. <clears throat> and he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times. Seven, always being symbolic of spiritual completeness. And shall pronounce him clean. And shall let the living bird loose into the open field. In the Hebrew, this into the open field. Uh, in the Hebrew, this reads over the face of the field. Verse 8. <laughs> and he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and wash himself in water, that he may be clean. And after that he shall come in, into the camp, and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days, or stay outside of his tent seven days. <clears throat> and now, he was uh, clean on the first day, but now he, in, he would enter into the enjoyment of uh, being clean himself. Verse 9, but it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off, and he shall wash his clothes, also he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. Verse 10, and on the eighth day, eight always being symbolic of uh, new beginnings in biblical numerics, he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenth deals of fine flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and one log of oil. Now, a tenth deal of flour, a tenth deal in the Hebrew is isaron, and it's about a half gallon dry measure, so three tenth deals would be about a gallon and a half 
dry measure. And a log, one log of oil, in the Hebrew, the word log is actually log, and it's about two-thirds of a pint liquid measure. Verse 11. And the priest that maketh <clears throat> him clean shall present the man that is to be made clean and those things before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation or at the entrance of the tent of assembly. Verse 12. And the priest shall take one he lamb and offer him for a trespass offering and the log of oil and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And remember this wave offering in the Hebrew, this is tenupah, and it was waved to and fro and presented for the four quarters of the earth. Verse 13. <clears throat> and he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is the trespass offering, it is most holy. One of the... Uh, the four most holy things. Verse 14. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. Now, <clears throat> this ear, thumb, and toe representative of for hearkening, the ear for hearkening, the thumb for working, and the toe for walking in God's ways. So hearkening unto God, working, doing God's work, and walking in God's ways. And always the lep the leper lep leprosy, you know, means to strike down. And it was always God that struck struck down whoever it was that had leprosy with this plague for some type of sin that they had committed. And so after he'd been cleansed, uh, now when they go to make the offering, the priest puts the blood on the ear, the thumb, and the toe um, to get this person to, as symbolic, for hearkening unto God, working for God, and walking in his ways. Fifteen, And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. Sixteen. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. Remember, seven um, being uh, in biblical numerics, spiritual completeness. Seventeen. And the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood of the trespass offering, in the same places that the blood was placed uh, on the ear, the right thumb, or the right ear, the right thumb, and the uh, great toe of the right foot. 18. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him that is to be cleansed. <sighs> Excuse me. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, or a covering of, for his sins. 19. And the priest shall offer the sin offering, and make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. And afterward, he shall kill the burnt offering. 20. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the meat offering, this being the grain or the meal offering, upon the altar. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and he shall be clean. 21. And if he be poor, this is always God's uh, grace and compassion showing up. And if he be poor, and cannot get so much, then he shall take one lamb for a trespass offering to be waived to make an atonement for him, 
and one tenth deal this being about a half gallon uh, dry measure uh, that being the tenth deal being a half gallon dry measure one tenth deal a fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering and a log of oil remember that log of oil is about two-thirds of a pint liquid measure 22 and two turtle doves or two young pigeons such as he is able to get whatever he's able to bring the poor man or woman and the one shall be a sin offering and the other a burnt offering 23 and he shall bring them on the eighth day eight symbolic of new beginnings for his cleansing unto the priest unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord before Yahweh 24 and the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering and the log of oil and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord and notice the ritual is the same for a poor person or a uh, a rich person or a, a normal middle class person 25 and he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot 26 and the priest shall pour of the oil into the palm of his own left hand. 27. And the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. 28. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offering. Again, the same. The, the tip of the right ear, the thumb of his right hand, and the great toe of his right foot. Uh, symbolic of hearkening, walking, and, or hearkening, working, and walking in God's ways. <clears throat> 29. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, to make an atonement for him before the Lord. <clears throat> 30. And he shall offer the one, the one of the turtle doves or of the young pigeons such as he can get, whatever he can come up with, afford. 31. Even such as he is able to get, the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering, with the meat offering, or the meal or grain offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed before the Lord. 32. This is the law of him in whom is the plague of leprosy, whose hand is not able to get that which pertaineth to the cleansing, or who cannot afford that which pertaineth to his cleansing. 33. Now, 33 through 53 is going to be covering leprosy in a house. 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Now, God is addressing Moses and Aaron. So, leper, the law of leprosy concerning persons addressed to just Moses. And this is uh, concerning person or concerning houses. So, it's addressed to uh, Moses and Aaron. 34. When ye be come into the land of Canaan, so this hasn't happened yet, but this is the promised land. When ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession. Did you catch that? And God said, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house. So there must have been sin in that house. <clears throat> 35. And he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. 36. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house, 
before the priest go into it to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean. And afterward, the priest shall go in to see the house. 37. And he shall look on the plague, and behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house with hollow strakes, this hollow strakes means sunken places, greenish or reddish, which, which in sight are lower than the wall, or uh, deeper than the wall, deeper than the surface of the wall, 38, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house, excuse me, and shut up the house seven days, or quarantine the house for seven days. 39. And the priest shall come again the seventh day, and shall look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house, 40. Then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is, and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city, or outside of the city. 40. And he shall cause the house to be scraped, the priest, within round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. 42. Probably in the same place where they put the stones. 42. And they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones. They should replace them. And he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. 43. And if the plague come again and break out in the house, after that he hath taken away the stones, and after he hath scraped the house, and after it is plastered, after he's replaced it with new stones and plastered it, 44. Then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house, it is unclean. Now this fretting leprosy, this means it's malignant or very virulent or infectious. 45. And he shall break down the house, the stones of it, and the timber thereof, and all the mortar of the house, and he shall carry them forth out of the city unto an unclean place, probably the same place where they put the dust and the stones. 46. Moreover, he that goeth into the house all the while that, is, that it is shut up shall be unclean until the even, or he shall be defiled until that evening. 47. And he that lieth in the house shall wash his clothes, and he that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. 48. And if the priest shall come in and look upon it, and behold, the plague hath not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean because the plague is healed. 49. And he shall take to cleanse the house two birds and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. 56. Or, excuse me, 50. And he shall kill the one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. 51. And he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet and the living bird and dip them in the blood of the slain bird and in the running water and sprinkle the house seven times. Remember, seven symbolic of spiritual completeness. 52. And he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the running water, and with the living bird, and with the cedar wood, and with the hyssop, and with the scarlet. Notice the, the and for emphasis of each part, and being that polysendentin. 53. But he shall let go the living bird out of the city into the open fields. Or remember, in the Hebrew, this means <clears throat> over the face of the field. 
and make an atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. 54. This is the law for all manner of plague of leprosy and skull, meaning scabs. 55. And for the leprosy of a garment and of a house. 56. And for a rising and for a scab and for a bright spot. 57. Now, uh, it's, it's written right here to teach when it is unclean, but some codices read and to teach, which would keep the polysendentin uh, to the end of the chapter and would make a lot of sense. So we'll read it that way. And to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. All right, that is going to conclude chapter 14 and the law of leprosy for persons and the law of leprosy concerning a house. I love you all because y'all love studying God's word with me uh, every chance we get chapter by chapter and verse by verse whereby we can glean that wisdom from our Heavenly Father who is amazing. He created all things. He created your very soul and your soul even belongs to Him. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4, all souls are mine. More importantly though, God loves you for it. When you study His Word, it, it makes him happy. It pleases him. Uh, I, I, you know, my pastor, he says this, and I believe this, that a lot of, uh, I don't think you have a lot of competition these days uh, for God's attention. I don't think too many folks are studying God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. I'm not saying that no one is. There are some out there that are studying God's word. Uh, chapter by chapter and verse by verse and teaching God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse but there's not many and so when you do that it pleases God and when you please God he's going to bless you he's going to protect you and your family and he's going to bless you and he's going to impart you that wisdom that you need to understand his word and he's going to give you that peace of mind that you need in these end times especially Especially in this final generation, uh, it's getting pretty wicked out there. And if you don't have that peace of mind that God's Word provides and our Heavenly Father provides, it, it can be a, a rough going out there. But when you do have that peace of mind, uh, you thrive as a Christian and you're blessed. And it's important that you study God's Word especially in these end times, in this final generation, the generation of the fig tree. Why? Because Satan and his fallen angels are coming at the sixth trump. And Satan is going to pretend to be Jesus Christ. And if you haven't studied God's word and you're not aware that Satan comes at the sixth trump and the true Christ doesn't return until the seventh, then whenever Satan and his fallen angels do show up at the sixth trump in those spiritual bodies, of course, they're just going to they're going to look like flesh bodies. Uh, they're going to have substance, but they're not going to be flesh. Uh, they'll be spiritual. and But they'll look, Satan's going to look just like you would think Jesus Christ is supposed to look. And he's going to be able to snap his fingers and call lightning down from heaven in the sight of men and work miracles. And if you're not, if you're not set for that, if you, you haven't studied God's word and you, have, and you don't know that Satan comes pretending to be Christ at the sixth trump, you're, you're at risk of being deceived and worshiping him, thinking that he's Jesus Christ. See, it's a sad thing that's going to happen. Uh, all these Christians that truly love the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, they, they, they attend church and, you know, they listen to their pastors who uh, preach, but they're being deceived. They're, they're being told that they're going to fly away. And that they don't have to understand God's word and the book of Revelation. And that they're not going to be here. They're going to be gone. They're going to be fly, flying away. Well, well, that's not the case. We're not flying anywhere. We we're created in the image of God and we don't have wings. We're not flying anywhere. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to this earth to set up his kingdom. Um, and the millennial, the, the Lord's day at the seventh trump. But Satan is coming first at the sixth trump. And he's coming to say that here I am, I've come to 
rapture you away and fly you away. And all those that haven't studied God's word and don't know the truth, you know, whether they haven't studied or they just haven't been taught, they're going to worship Satan thinking that he's Jesus Christ. And it's going to be a sad thing. And they're going to be devastated whenever the true Christ's feet hit the ground and they figure out that they've worshipped Satan himself, Lucifer, thinking that he was Christ. Uh, they're not going to be happy with themselves. The good news is, is that you don't have to be deceived. God's foretold you all things in his word and you have that ability to study for it yourself. You know, don't trust, don't trust this man or any other man. No matter uh, what you, what your preacher preaches, you know, unless he's teaching God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, then I would suggest that you do some studying on your own and get into God's word on your own and read it for yourself and get the tools that you'll need to help you understand it. Those tools being Number one, uh, our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, who will teach you all things. Uh, and number two, a Strong's Concordance. Uh, you want to get the Strong's Concordance that <clears throat> looks like this. It's the new Strong's Concordance. You don't want the uh, expanded version or anything like that. You want this version, the new Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible where it gives you the, the Hebrew and Greek uh, definitions to where you can take the King James Bible and take every word in the King James Bible, take it back to original languages and see what the meanings are. Also, a good tool to have, the Smith's Bible Dictionary. Um, it helps you out with names of different people, you know, because you have a lot of the people that have the same names in God's Word. And it's just an awesome tool to have. Again, that's the Smith's Bible Dictionary. Also, um, if you can get a hold of one, the Companion Bible by E.W. Bullinger. And you want to make sure that you get the one by E.W. Bullinger. There's a lot of versions out there. And you can uh, obtain these on the internet or, uh, you know, just wherever wherever you can find them. I personally obtained mine from the Shepherd's Chapel. Uh, you don't have to get your yours there, but that's where I obtained mine from. And uh, they're great works that they offer and uh, really helps me out when I'm studying God's Word and trying to prepare these uh, teachings for you all. All right. Um, I love you all. Don't miss the next lecture. And thank you for watching.